Beloved, there are many in this world who claim to walk with God, but how few there are who bear the unmistakable marks of His divine anointing. If you are to know whether the Spirit of the Lord rests upon you in a mighty way, there are signs clear and undeniable that manifest in the lives of those whom God has set apart for His special purposes. These are not signs of boasting, but evidences of grace, the work of God's hand upon a soul yielded to Him. Let us then consider five signs that you may be greatly anointed by the Most High. A deep hunger for God's presence is one of the clearest signs that a soul has been greatly anointed by the Lord. This hunger is not satisfied by anything the world offers, it is a longing that can only be filled by the very presence of God Himself. The heart that has tasted the sweetness of communion with the Almighty craves more of Him, for nothing else will suffice. Just as physical hunger drives a person to seek nourishment, so does spiritual hunger compel the anointed soul to seek God with all their being, yearning for His touch and His voice above all else. This longing grows as one draws nearer to God, for the more of Him one knows, the more of Him one desires. Those who are greatly anointed find that their hunger for God's presence transforms every aspect of their lives. Prayer becomes not a duty but a delight, a sacred meeting place where their soul is nourished by the living waters that flow from the throne of grace. They rise early to seek Him, for their soul cannot rest until it has communed with its Maker. In moments of stillness their heart is drawn heavenward, whispering the words of the psalmist, My soul thirsts for you, O God, when shall I come and appear before you? Their thoughts are continually turned toward the Lord, for their heart finds its home only in His presence. This hunger for God also manifests in a deep desire for His Word. The anointed soul does not approach the Scriptures as a mere book of teachings, but as the very words of life, breathed out by God Himself. Each verse, each promise, each command becomes a treasure to be meditated upon and cherished. The anointed cannot go long without feeding on the bread of life, for they know that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. They are like the prophet Jeremiah who said, Your words were found, and I ate them, and your word became to me the joy and delight of my heart. Moreover, this deep hunger for God's presence is not satisfied with mere religious activity or outward form. The anointed soul knows that the external trappings of religion cannot replace true communion with the Lord. They are not content with attending services or fulfilling obligations if their heart is not fully engaged in worship. Their soul cries out for more than routine it longs for the living God Himself. They seek not just the hand of God but His face, desiring to behold His glory and experience His nearness in the secret place. This is the hunger that drives them into the inner chambers of prayer, where they meet with God in intimacy and reverence. As this hunger for God's presence grows, the anointed often find themselves dissatisfied with the things that once brought them pleasure. Worldly distractions and pursuits lose their appeal in the light of God's glory. Entertainment, success, and material gain seem shallow compared to the depths of joy and peace found in His presence. The anointed soul is marked by a holy dissatisfaction, a yearning that cannot be quenched by the fleeting pleasures of this life. This is not a burden but a gift, for it draws them closer to the one who alone can satisfy the deepest longings of the heart. In this state of longing the anointed also experience a greater sensitivity to the presence of sin. Their desire for God is so strong that anything that hinders their communion with Him becomes unbearable. The Holy Spirit within them convicts them of even the smallest sins, prompting them to repent quickly and seek cleansing. They echo the prayer of David, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. They are keenly aware that sin disrupts their fellowship with God, and they will not rest until that fellowship is restored. Furthermore, this deep hunger for God's presence is not a private affair, it spills over into their interactions with others. Those who are greatly anointed long to see others experience the same communion with God that they enjoy. They become passionate about leading others into His presence, whether through prayer, teaching, or simply sharing their testimony of God's goodness. Their hunger for God fuels their ministry as they yearn to see His kingdom come and His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. They desire that the whole world would know the joy and peace that comes from living in the presence of God. Finally, those who are greatly anointed by God find that their hunger for His presence continues to grow throughout their lives. It is not a hunger that diminishes with time, rather. It intensifies as they experience more of God's love, power, and grace. 
This longing is a sign that they have been touched by the divine, for no earthly experience can create such a hunger. They are continually pressing in, seeking more of God, knowing that He alone can satisfy their soul's deepest desires. Unwavering commitment to holiness is one of the distinguishing marks of those who are greatly anointed by God. The anointed soul recognizes that holiness is not an option, but a command or reflection of God's own character. Be ye holy, for I am holy, declares the Lord. This call to holiness is not merely a pursuit of moral uprightness, but a surrender to the transforming power of the Spirit, allowing God to mold the believer into the likeness of Christ. The anointed know that they are vessels set apart for God's purposes, and they take seriously the call to live in purity, not only outwardly but within the depths of their hearts. The anointed are keenly aware that holiness is not achieved through their own strength. It is the work of God in them, and they must continually rely on His grace to walk in righteousness. They have come to understand that their flesh is weak and prone to sin, but they also know that the Spirit of God within them is mighty. They lean on the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome temptation and to live in a manner that pleases God. The anointed are not complacent, for they know that without the Spirit's guidance they would quickly fall. Instead, they walk humbly before the Lord, seeking His strength day by day to maintain a life of purity and integrity. The pursuit of holiness also involves a constant rejection of worldliness. The anointed recognize that the world offers countless temptations that seek to draw their hearts away from God. But their eyes are fixed on higher things and they are not easily swayed by the fleeting pleasures and distractions that surround them. They have counted the cost of following Christ and they have chosen to forsake all that would compromise their walk with Him. Their commitment to holiness means they refuse to conform to the patterns of this world and instead they are transformed by the renewing of their minds as they fill their hearts with the truth of God's Word. The anointed understand that holiness is not simply a list of do's and don t's, but a posture of the heart. They know that God desires not just outward obedience but inner purity. They therefore seek to cultivate a heart that is pure before God, a heart that loves what He loves and hates what He hates. The anointed long for their motives to be pleasing to the Lord, for they understand that God looks not only at their actions but at the thoughts and intentions of their hearts. This inner work of holiness involves regular self-examination, confession, and repentance as they continually seek to align their hearts with God's will. Living with an unwavering commitment to holiness often sets the anointed apart from those around them. The world may see them as peculiar, for their values and priorities are vastly different from the norms of society. While others chase after wealth, status, and pleasure, the anointed are consumed with a desire to live a life that is holy and pleasing to God. This separation can lead to misunderstanding, criticism, and even persecution, but the anointed do not waver. They are not concerned with the approval of man, but with the approval of God. Their hearts are steadfast, for they know that the narrow way of holiness is the path that leads to life. The pursuit of holiness also requires a life of discipline. The anointed are not haphazard in their spiritual walk, but are intentional about guarding their hearts and minds from anything that would defile them. They set boundaries around what they watch, listen to, and engage with, knowing that their spiritual sensitivity must be preserved. They devote themselves to prayer, to the reading of Scripture, and to fellowship with other believers who encourage them in their walk of holiness. They know that compromise begins in small, seemingly insignificant areas, and they guard against even the smallest foothold of sin in their lives, for they are determined to remain set apart for the Lord's work. Holiness also produces a deep sense of reverence for God. The anointed live with an awareness of God's holiness and majesty, and this awareness shapes their conduct. They know that they serve a God who is a consuming fire, and they tremble at the thought of offending Him. This fear of the Lord is not a fear of punishment, but a profound respect for God's purity and righteousness. It causes the anointed to walk carefully, knowing that their lives are to reflect the glory of the One who called them. They take seriously their role as ambassadors of Christ, understanding that their holiness is a testimony to a watching world of the transforming power of the gospel. Finally, the unwavering commitment to holiness is fueled by love, love for God and love for others. The anointed do not pursue holiness out of a sense of obligation or fear, but out of a deep love for the one who first loved them. They desire to be holy because they desire to please the heart of their Savior. Their love for God drives them to forsake sin and to cling to righteousness. 
At the same time, their love for others compels them to live in a way that honors God and blesses those around them. Holiness is not self-centered but others-centered, as it seeks the good of others through a life that reflects the purity and love of Christ. Empowered for spiritual battle is a defining mark of those greatly anointed by God. From the moment a believer receives the anointing of the Holy Spirit, they are enlisted in a divine warfare, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and the rulers of the darkness of this world. The anointed understand that they live in a spiritual battlefield, not a playground, and thus they are equipped with weapons that are mighty through God for pulling down strongholds. Their strength does not come from human might or wisdom, but from the Spirit of God who empowers them to stand firm in the face of every demonic assault and temptation. The anointed are acutely aware that spiritual warfare is not optional for the believer. They are constantly engaged in a conflict where the enemy seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. However, their confidence lies in the fact that the victory has already been secured by Christ on the cross. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, they enter the battle with a sense of triumph, knowing that the one who is in them is greater than the one who is in the world. Though they face many trials and attacks, they do not fight for victory, but from victory standing on the promises of God and the finished work of Christ. The armor of God becomes their daily necessity. The anointed do not step into the day without first clothing themselves in the whole armor of God. The belt of truth girds their loins, for they know that deception is the enemy's favorite tool, and only the truth of God's word can keep them standing firm. The breastplate of righteousness covers their heart, for they understand that the righteousness of Christ is their protection against the accusations of the enemy. Their feet are shod with the readiness of the gospel of peace, for they march not in fear but with a mission to proclaim the good news wherever they go. And above all, they take up the shield of faith, quenching the fiery darts of doubt, fear, and temptation that the enemy hurls at them. The anointed also know the power of wielding the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In spiritual battle they do not rely on human reasoning or persuasive arguments, but on the living and active Word of God, sharper than any two-edged sword. When the enemy comes with lies and accusations, they respond not with their own words, but with it is written, just as Christ overcame the devil in the wilderness by speaking the Word of God, so the anointed are trained to do the same. They have hidden the word in their hearts, so they are always ready to strike back when the enemy tries to lead them astray. The word is their defense, their offense, and their victory. Prayer is their battle cry. The anointed know that spiritual warfare is not fought in their own strength, but through constant communication with their commander-in-chief, the Lord Almighty. They understand that apart from Him, they can do nothing, and thus they are diligent in prayer. In moments of crisis they do not panic, but they bow their heads and lift their hearts to the one who holds all power and authority. They intercede with boldness, knowing that they have been given the right to approach the throne of grace and find help in time of need. In prayer they receive divine strategies, guidance, and strength to face whatever lies ahead. The anointed recognize that spiritual battle often brings them into direct confrontation with the forces of darkness, but they are not afraid. They have been given authority over demons and all the power of the enemy. When they encounter spiritual opposition, whether in their personal lives, their families, or their ministries, they take their stand in the authority of Jesus Christ. They speak His name with confidence, for they know that at the name of Jesus every knee must bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. The anointed drive out darkness, break chains, and set captives free, not by their own power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within them. Moreover, the anointed do not fight alone. They understand that they are part of a spiritual army, and they rely on the strength and support of their fellow believers. They stand shoulder to shoulder with their brothers and sisters in Christ, praying for one another, encouraging one another, and fighting the good fight of faith together. They are aware that the enemy seeks to isolate believers, for a lone sheep is vulnerable to attack. But the anointed stay close to the flock, knowing that there is strength in unity. They are not afraid to ask for help, to confess their struggles and to lean on the prayers and wisdom of others in the body of Christ. Finally, those anointed for spiritual battle know that their ultimate weapon is not one of violence but of love. They are empowered by the love of God which casts out fear and disarms the enemy. The love of Christ compels them to pray even for their enemies, to forgive those who persecute them, and to bless those who curse them. This love is not of human origin but is poured into their hearts by the Holy Spirit. 
In the heat of battle it is this divine love that enables them to remain steadfast, to continue pressing forward, and to overcome evil with good. This love conquers all, and is the greatest evidence of God's anointing upon their lives. Fruitfulness in ministry is a hallmark of those who are greatly anointed by God. It is not merely the result of human effort or skill but the outflow of a life empowered by the Holy Spirit. The anointed understand that true fruitfulness cannot be manufactured by their own strength, but comes from abiding in Christ, the true vine. As Jesus said, Apart from me you can do nothing. The anointed know this well, and so they cultivate a deep, abiding relationship with the Lord, trusting that as they remain in Him, He will produce lasting fruit through their lives and ministries. The fruit they bear is the evidence of God's hand at work, transforming lives and advancing His kingdom. Their ministries are marked by spiritual fruit that glorifies God, not themselves. They are not concerned with building their own kingdoms or gaining recognition, but with seeing souls saved, believers edified, and the name of Christ exalted. The fruit they seek is not measured by numbers or accolades, but by the depth of transformation in the lives they touch. The anointed long to see the fruit of repentance, the fruit of righteousness, and the fruit of the Spirit in those they minister to. They desire that their labor would produce not just temporary results but eternal ones, where hearts are genuinely changed and people are drawn into deeper relationship with God. Moreover, the anointed know that fruitfulness in ministry requires patience and perseverance. They understand that the harvest often takes time and the results may not always be immediate. Like a farmer who waits for the crops to grow, they sow seeds of the gospel faithfully, trusting that in due season they will reap if they do not give up. The anointed are not discouraged by setbacks, opposition, or lack of visible results, for they know that it is God who gives the increase. Their confidence rests in the fact that God's word does not return void but accomplishes the purpose for which it was sent. They continue to labor in love, knowing that God is faithful to bring forth fruit in his time. The anointed also recognize that fruitfulness in ministry is a result of their willingness to be led by the Spirit. They do not rely on their own plans or strategies but are sensitive to the leading of God in all things. They understand that the Spirit blows where He wills and they must be attentive to His promptings if they are to be fruitful. This requires a heart of surrender, where they lay down their own ambitions and agendas in order to follow the path God has set before them. The anointed are not rigid in their methods but are flexible, allowing the Holy Spirit to direct their steps and guide their ministry efforts according to His perfect will. As they walk in step with the Spirit, the anointed find that their ministry produces fruit in unexpected places. They often see the greatest impact in the lives of those whom the world has overlooked the broken, the marginalized, the outcast. They have a heart for the lost and the least, knowing that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. The anointed go where others might not go, ministering in humility and compassion to those who are in desperate need of God's love and grace. Their fruitfulness is not confined to the walls of the church, but extends to the streets, to the prisons, to the homes of the hurting and the hopeless. Furthermore, the anointed understand that fruitfulness in ministry is sustained by a life of prayer. They know that apart from a deep dependence on God through prayer, their efforts will be in vain. Prayer is the lifeblood of their ministry, the means by which they receive direction, strength and power from the Lord. The anointed spend time on their knees before they stand before others, interceding for those they minister to and seeking God's wisdom for every step they take. They do not trust in their own abilities, but in the power of God to work through them. Their fruitfulness is a direct result of their intimate communion with the Lord, who hears and answers their prayers. Lastly, the anointed understand that fruitfulness in ministry is not only about what is accomplished outwardly, but also about what God is doing within them. They know that ministry flows from the heart, and God is always at work shaping their character, refining their faith, and deepening their dependence on Him. As they bear fruit outwardly, they also bear fruit inwardly, the fruit of humility, patience, endurance, and love. The anointed are aware that God is more concerned with who they are becoming than with what they are doing. Their fruitfulness is not just in the results of their ministry, but in the growth of their own walk with the Lord, becoming more like Christ with every passing day.
I don't know how to write a love song It seems so hard to me I thought the problem was there's no conflict But I was wrong Hidden away and yeah, right there I'm scared of just how much Much I care Explain it How you make me feel this way When you put your hand through my hair When you hold me Saying it will be okay How could I possibly say you're right Oh I tried, I've been up all night I wish you knew How much I care How I'd be lost if you weren't there You ground me, you saved me You're another part of me I don't know how to explain it how you make me feel this way When you put your hand through my hair When you hold me saying It will be okay How could I possibly say it right? Oh, I tried, I've been up all night How much I knew How much I care How I'd be lost if you weren't there You ground me, you saved me You're another part of me How could a song be enough When everything we've been through Never broke us no matter how rough you rescue me, you stay true. You always do. How I convey how you make my day. I don't know how to say it the right way. How much I care. How I'd be lost if you weren't there. You ground me, you save me. You're another part of me. I struggle to find hope. I struggle to sleep at night. I can't struggle to let you know. Let you go For so long You helped me fight We created life I don't know if this is a love song I don't know what to do Because I love you